Okay, what is an exponential function? A function that's exponential is going to look like y equals some number, we'll call it a, times some other number, we'll call it b, that's in the base raised to the x power. What that effectively means is you have a starting value. And sometimes we call that the initial value. Sometimes, sorry, there should be a space in there. Sometimes we should call that the y-intercept. And this b value we call the base. And that also determines if it's growth or decay, whether it's going to go up fast, slow, or down fast or slow. And our x is going to be your variable that that will um, that's your you know independent variable and y is your dependent variable that we can graph. Um, in practice, we want to be able to, to kind of see what this graph looks like. So if we pick a number for a and b, let's say y equals, and we'll call a one, and we'll call b two, and we'll raise it to the x power. You can see what the this is kind of one of the more common exponential functions. If you click here on Desmos, you know, there's your y-intercept 0 comma 1. And you can see that it's growing pretty fast as x goes to the right. And it on the left side, it just kind of flat lines and approaches 0. It doesn't ever become 0, but it gets pretty darn close. I know it says 0 there, but it's actually um, gets closer and closer to 0 as x gets further to the left. So we can play around with these numbers. You know, the more, the, the higher the base goes, the steeper that's going to be. So it's going to be um, growth, but a little bit steeper. Four is going to even be more steep. If that's two, that's where we started. If we go back down to one, that's a flat line. That means that's not going to be growing. So anything above one, you know, even 1.1 1 .1 is considered growth. 1.2 is considered growth. Anything below one, maybe 0 0.9, that's going to be going downward. Let me zoom out a little bit. You can see that's actually going to be decay. 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 6, 5. We can go all the way down to 0. Point, well, 0 is just 0. It's not going to be anything. But 0 0.1 or 0 0.01 even, it's still going to be decay. So the closer you get to 0, the, the more decay it is. But 1's kind of like the baseline. And anything above 1 is growth. Anything below 1 is decay. So let me go back to two. Now, if we go to the a beginning number, you know, we said that was your y-intercept, but the, it's a little bit more than that. So like that two here, notice that became zero two. If I made that a three, that's gonna be zero three. And it's not only raising that y-intercept up, but it's also making that graph more stretched out. So if that were six, it's it's being pulled up even more. So it's it it's, it does have a stretching factor as well as um, changing that y-intercept. And of course, the that y-intercept can start negative. It can go negative four if you negative five if you want, and it would be flipped downward, just over the y-axis x-axis. But it's still going to be um, your it's still going to give you your y-intercept unless at the end of the function you do something like add a number. So like if I added four, well suddenly my y-intercept became negative one because I went from negative five and then I added four and that gave me my, my new y-intercept the negative one. So we can shift that up or down. We can even go left or right if we wanted to. We'll get more into that later. So what we want to do is we want to be able to identify not just the y-intercept in the base. We want to know if, you know, what, uh, what the function is going to be, if it's going to be growth or decay. So let's first talk about uh, problem. Let me um, write this down here. Okay, so three examples we can work out together, and then I'll have you try a couple. We want to, first on these problems, determine which functions are considered exponential growth or decay. We also want to determine the y-intercept and growth factor and be able to sketch a graph for this. So what the y-intercept is kind of, well, I start with the y-intercept, but I also want to kind of deal with where is this graph going to center around and if it's going to go be up or down. So let's look at the starting value first. That two is your initial value, all right? So that would be considered your a value. 
and your y-intercept, if there's no number being added or subtracted at the end, is just going to be zero comma the a value. So there's your y-intercept. The number in the base is your is going to determine if it's going to be growth or decay normally. So that since that number is greater than one, that's going to be growth. So your growth factor is going to be three. And because that x is positive, that's not messing anything up. So what we'll do is sketch a graph of that, just a rough graph. You don't need to label all the axes and all the marks, but you want it to cross at the coordinate zero two. And because it's gonna be growing, we want it to be going upward. So as you go to the right, it's gonna approach zero on the left side. And as you go to the right, it's gonna go up, something like that. And as long as this looks like it's approaching the x-axis here, but not going to be going over it, we're gonna be fine. We can also back that up with a graph. Use Desmos or your handheld calculator. You can just kind of put in um, y equals two parentheses three to the x power. And you can see here what that graph would look like on, on your graphing calculator. And as you look over here, it's never gonna go over the x-axis. So that is definitely gonna be growth and it's gonna hit at the coordinate zero two. For question two, in this problem, if you look at your initial value, there's no number outside of the parentheses. So that actual number is one, and that is your A value, but it's not your Y-intercept in this case, because at the end of the function, we're adding three. So the Y-intercept is gonna be zero comma one, but then we're gonna add three to that. So it's gonna be zero comma four. The three quarters here, that's your base, and x is a, a positive x value, so that's gonna, it's not gonna mess anything up with the way the graph opens, but that base being three quarters, that's actually less than one. So it's going to be decay. So your growth factor is gonna make this actually decay. It's gonna be really a decay factor, but um, we still call it the growth factor. Um, it's going to be three fours. So since it's going to be decay, and the graph crosses at zero four, we want to go up here to zero four. But also, it's going to flatline differently. Instead of uh, flatlining at the x-axis, since it's shifted up three, it's actually going to flatline at the value y equals three. Uh, so that's gonna be your horizontal asymptote. We call that an asymptote, A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E. And that's gonna be at y equals three. It's whatever that value that's being added or subtracted at the end is. So since it's decay and it's gonna cross at zero four, it's gonna look like this. Never going to cross over the the line y equals three. And you wanna verify that with the graph. So we'll put this in here. And take a look at that graph here, how it's, it's um, approaching three as x goes to the right and it's decay. All right, the last problem, y equals three times 0 0.5 to the negative x. We have our initial value, that's gonna be a, and there's no number being added or subtracted at the end. So your, um, your y-intercept is going to be zero comma three. Your number, for your base is 0 0.5, but we have a negative x here. And that negative x is actually messing things up. If you remember properties of exponent, if I took a number like you know, zero, 0 0.5, which really is just one half, if I raise that to the negative x power, that's actually the same as saying the reciprocal of one half, so two over one, 
raised to the positive x power. So that really is 2 to the x power, not 0.5. But 0.5 to the negative x power is the same thing as 2 to the x power. So that's actually kind of tricky because your base really isn't 0 0.5 in this case, your base is two and it's gonna be a growth since that's greater than one. So that graph is gonna cross It's gonna cross at zero three. It's not being shifted up or down because there's nothing being added or subtracted to the end. And it's gonna be growing. So it's gonna go up as it goes to the right. So let's verify that on a graph. When in doubt, you're not sure about what the, the rules state, you can always uh, put it in your calculator just to see what that graph looks like. If that graph is going up as it goes to the right, it is going to be growth. In this case, it's growth. And it is going to cross at 0, 3. And because that is going up, we have our growth function. All right, just a couple for you to try. I'd like you to read the problem, determine which functions are exponential, growth or decay, determine the y-intercept of the growth and growth factor, and sketch a graph. And uh, be sure that you can use Desmos to check your graph if you need to. Um, why don't you pause the video and give it a try. And um, when you unpause it, you can check the solutions on here. Go ahead and pause. Okay, here's the question four. Um, in this problem, we're given that three initial value with no number being added at the end. So your y-intercept is gonna be zero, three. Even though this b value initially is a four, that negative x actually is gonna make that a one-fourth. So it really is decay, and you can verify that on Desmos. It's gonna be going down as it goes to the right. So it's a decay, and um, try number five. Okay, question five had an initial value of a uh, equals one since there wasn't anything written. But the y-intercept isn't gonna be one, it's gonna be one minus four because it's being shifted down. So the y-intercept would be zero comma negative three. Uh, the base is 1.1, that is greater than one, so it's gonna be growth. That x value is just x, so it's not anything that's gonna be flipped. So it's gonna go up as it goes to the right, but it is shifted down four, so since it crosses at negative three, it's, it's gonna flat line at the horizontal asymptote y equals negative four. So it'll never cross over y equals negative four. And you can put that in Desmos and check your graph as well. All right, uh, this should uh, help you with some of the problems on your assignment.